Hey guys, this is Kyle with uh, Inside the Play again. We're going to take a look at some Kenny Stabler plays. Uh, looking at the snake, was extremely saddened to hear about his passing yesterday. For people of my generation, I was born in the mid-80s. and Growing up, you got to listen to Stabler call games with Eli Gold. and There's so many great moments that you were told about as a kid and you grew up kind of idolizing this guy and he uh, he endeared himself to our whole generation as kind of the the great uncle everybody wished you had uh, telling the stories and just being genuinely happy to be there all the time I know there was there was a lot of those early morning kickoffs we'd have during some of those really bad years and you'd tune in and the first thing you'd hear is Eli asked Kenny something Kenny telling me he was playing hurt that day but there was also the good moments, like after Sean's touchdown to ice the game against Auburn in 1999, when Kenny started screaming at Eli, let's go to the Georgia Dome, but uh, we're really going to miss him. But for my generation, people who didn't really ever get to see him play, I'm going to take a look at some of his plays. Uh, when he came to Alabama, it was 1964. He sat behind Joe Namath and watched Namath win a national championship. 1965, he sat behind Steve Sloan and watched Steve Sloan win a national championship. In 1966, it was his turn. This is his first start of 66. The first season that was really going to be his. He was the guy. Uh, this is against Louisiana Tech, and you're going to see him make a perfect throw here. Uh, this is a variation, and I'm going to let you know, there's not going to be a lot of football talk in here, chalk talk. It's hard to do on these old films. They're real tight, but just to give you a little idea, this is the old T formation. There used to be a back here. They moved him to a wing T, which a lot of high schools still run, which was a back here. But now Coach Bryant split this back all the way down, and he's going to run it. It looks like a go pattern or maybe a skinny post. And Stabler's just going to throw a perfect ball, and uh, he's going to hit him in stride in the end zone. And, you know, watch this. A little play action fake. Stabler, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful ball right into the hands for a touchdown. And, you know, that's the first quarter of him as the guy in Tuscaloosa as a junior. The next one we'll look at is the 1966 Alabama-Tennessee game. And for anybody who knows me, I hate Tennessee. That's my favorite game of the year. Uh, it's one of those teams I love to hate. And uh, these are the stories that I always read about and listened to growing up like this, the 66 game where in the 60s and 70s, the Alabama-Tennessee game was a de facto SEC championship. And I know I can speak for a lot of people that can't wait for the party when we get to play Tennessee in Atlanta. That's going to be a good time. But uh, here we go. We're looking. Bama's down 10 nothing. You know, we're the two-time defending national champions on the road in Knoxville. It's been rainy and messy all day. Down 10 to nothing. Stabler's going to lead us back. Here he is, a little play action. Look at this, slips away. Look at that move to get away from that guy. Here he comes, a bullet, and, you know, I can't see who they are. Then he, just down the road, sneaks it in. Here he comes on the two-point conversion, and boom. Just like that, it's 10-8. Tennessee's led and dominated, but Stabler, a little elusiveness, toughness punching it in the end zone, and then right there, look, he didn't wait to set his feet and make sure that he did everything perfect and looked good. Man, he just made the play. Saw him open, got him the ball. Which, while I do have a second, this is the coolest look ever. We have to go back to this. The orange and the crimson jerseys. Man, look how cool this looks. We got to go back to that. So, it's 10-8 to 8 when Bama gets the ball back. Here he comes. Hits a little inside dump pass. Gets us down into field goal range. And then watch this. It's going to be a snap. And like I said, it's a wet, rainy day. Stabler's going to mishandle the snap, but he's going to do everything he has to do to make sure we can win. He's going to get the ball down. If he's a second late, we lose this game. No one ever talks about how that team was scrubbed and it never gets into the whole situation of how the racial, I guess the racial status of the South during the late 60s was influencing even one of our most sacred things in the South of football. You know, it's awful to say that the racial standings was changed because of, you know, what happens to football, but it is the South. And I know that a lot of people really upset that we were punished for not having any African-American players. And 
for all that to take place and the big political change to take place, you've also got to look back to, does Kenny get this hold down? Watch this. He's able to pull it up, get the hold down. The kick is good, and Bama beats Tennessee 11 to 10. Uh, that's just one of those things that you never think about. Get Kenny getting that hold down, that's such an important play that so many quarterbacks would just sit there and say, oh, I dropped it or whatever. But he was going to make the play, and that led to that being one of the all-time great Alabama teams, undefeated, untied, uncrowned. And I really felt like that started the ball rolling to people saying, you know, we're being looked at differently here in the South. You know, that's a personal opinion, but there's that. Then we moved to Kenny's senior year. Uh, going into this game, this is obviously the run in the mud, one of the most famous plays in Alabama history. Going into this game, uh, Bama had already lost two games, so it was really unfamiliar territory, but Stabler was not going to let his last regular season college game be a loss. All right, Bama had pushed the ball. We're uh, around the 50. I think we're on about our own 47 here. And uh, Kenny knows this is a quagmire in here, man. It's just a muddy mess. No one can get any footing. Everybody's falling down. And you're going to see, you can't see him here, but he's right in here. He's going to bust out. This is Dennis Hoban. He's going to lay a nice block. Uh, I'm not sure who this is here, but he's going to come back and get a block. And Kenny's going to get to this grass. And when the snake got to grass, snaking grass, he's gone. And uh, watch it here. Look him get inside of this. A nice block. Get a block from the pitch man. And once Kenny's, it was an option, but it wasn't an option. It was Kenny's. Look at him outrun this guy. He had an angle on him, but ain't nobody got an angle on Kenny Stabler. And there he is for the winning touchdown. Alabama beats Auburn 7-3. to Now, he left Alabama and went on to the Oakland Raiders. And I'm going to tell you, I hope a lot of Raider fans are getting to watch this. Uh... You know, there's a huge Raider contingent in Alabama because of Stabler that loves those old Raider teams. And uh, I know with Amari going there, I hope we can kind of rekindle that because these old Oakland Raider teams, man, they were a lot of fun. This is the Raiders and the Steelers. If there's ever a classic image of the NFL, this is it to me. Stabler under center behind the Raiders offensive line against the steel curtain. Like, if you tell me to draw the NFL, this is the picture I would draw. This is the 1972 playoffs. The Steelers are up 6 to nothing. There's less than three minutes to go in the game. Uh, Kenny Stabler's converted a couple, fourth, or a couple third downs to get the Raiders in this position. And then watch this. As he drops back, everyone thinks he's got to throw, got to throw, got to throw. Not the snake. Snake takes off down the sideline. It beats that angle little shimmy shake and dives into the end zone and gives the Raiders the lead. I mean, that's amazing. That's Kenny Stabler at his absolute finest, guys. That's Stabler making the play to get the win. He wasn't concerned about what's the smart thing to do. He was concerned about winning. And that's all Kenny did, man. He won everywhere he went. And you can see him getting mobbed on the sideline. They're about to show the rear view. This play right here should be shown forever in NFL history, but it's not because the immaculate reception happened the next drive. This is such a great play on Stabler's part. Should have sent them on to the Super Bowl for them to go. Hopefully, it would have won the Super Bowl that year. I think they would have. But Stabler doing what it takes. You don't see NFL quarterbacks take off and go on long runs. You know They want to sit in the pocket and do things, but not Kenny. The next one we're going to look at is the Sea of Hands play against the Dolphins. The Dolphins had won the AFC three consecutive years. All right, there's this is late in the game, less than three minutes to go. Stabler comes out. All right, and watch where he puts this ball. Puts it high and lets his receiver go get it. He knows who that receiver is. That's Fred Bolitnikoff. You put the ball high and you let Bolitnikoff go get that ball. And the most Raiders thing ever. Not only is he going to spike it, he's going to spike it. Both of you spike it right in their face. All right, look at Kenny sitting back. Cool, put the ball high. Look, he gets the ball here. If he throws it underneath, the Dolphins' corner can cut under and get a pick. Puts it up high, and he knows this guy is so good, he's going to have an award named after him one day. All right, maybe he didn't know that much, but he knew this guy was great. He knew Fred Bolitnikoff would go get this ball, so he puts it up high, lets Bolitnikoff battle for it. There he goes. Touchdown. 
And like I said, I just love the idea of not only is Blitnikoff spike it, but you get a good view of it here. All right. Let's cut their heart out. And then come back and I'm going to spike it right in your face. God, such a great, that's, that's the perfect thing of those late or the mid 70s, early 70s Raider teams. All right. And the last one I'm going to look at is probably Stabler's most famous play. It's uh, Ghost to the Post. So here we go. Here's Stabler talking with John Madden. Second and 10 with 2.17 to go. Look at young dapper Kenny there. But uh, they're on their own 40. They've got to get down. They've got to kick a field goal to win this game, to tie this game. Stabler just cool as a cucumber. Sit back, pump fake, look at him, see it. Now look, he's going to let this ball go, and he's going to split the safety in the corner. I can't show it to you now, but you're going to see it when he gets the ball. And he's going to throw it as far as he can throw it and still keep it within uh, Casper's range. Casper's going to run under it. Look at this. Boom. Perfect. Inside field goal range. They're going to line up and kick a field goal here in a second to send it to overtime. Just one of those amazing Kenny can make it type plays to where once he got between those guys, Kenny's going to throw him open. You know, you, you don't hear that a lot anymore, but he throws him open. He sees he's between them, so instead of throwing it right at him and let those guys be able to make a play, Kenny puts it up, puts it over his head, and trusts his guy to go make the play and run under it. And then... I like symmetry. I like when things end the way they began. So we began this looking at Kenny throwing a touchdown pass in the back corner of the end zone. And we're going to look at end it here to put them out of this, uh, to put the Colts out of the 77 AFC playoffs in overtime. Kenny, 10 years later, 12 years later, still that perfect throw right to the corner. Uh, he's going to be missed by everybody in the Alabama family. Um, you know, my thoughts and prayers are with his family and I know it's a tough time for them. I followed him on Twitter for a few years and man, he loved his nephews. He is always tweeting about his grandkids and nephews and everyone. He is so proud of them and um, I hope they can all feel the love still from him. I also want to encourage everyone to make a donation to the XOXO Stabler Foundation and try to, you know, Try to keep what Kenny meant going. And Kenny, you know, everybody makes fun of his hard charging and his, you know, hardcore lifestyle. Man, he loved everybody. And he wanted nothing more than to help people. And if anything comes out of this, I hope other people go out and help people. And uh, we'll miss you, Kenny.